Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New York St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8th, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I was in the news headlines for my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989. That discovery was highlighted in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal, as well as by the two top mathematical societies, namely the American Mathematical Society and the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. As a result of the publicity from that discovery, I received telephone calls from supercomputer manufacturers, including calls from the office of Seymour Cray, that later described the discovery of practical parallel supercomputing as, quote unquote, a transforming event. Four years after my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing, and in 1993, the supercomputer company of Seymour Cray switched over from the sequential supercomputer to the parallel supercomputer that it formally mocked, ridiculed, as a huge waste of everybody's time. My contribution to the development of the supercomputer is this. I discovered that practical parallel processing, the technology that was believed to be impossible to harness, is in fact possible to annex. I discovered that Amdahl's law speed up limit that was described in supercomputer textbooks as a limit of a factor of eightfold speed increase is not a limit on the speed ups of the times to solution of grand challenge problems. I must confess that I struggled to come to terms with my own success and my contributions to the development of the supercomputer. The parallel supercomputer was the most complicated machinery ever built because the new technology was extremely difficult to understand. I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer of the 1980s. I was the only person because only one supercomputer programmer was successfully parallel processing grand challenge problems and doing so back in the 1980s. As an aside, each generation knows more than their predecessors. Eventually, the student will know more than his teachers. At age 34, I knew more about the parallel supercomputer than Seymour Cray did. Seymour Cray taught every person something about the vector supercomputer. In the 1980s, vector processing was the dominant paradigm in supercomputing. Today, Vector processing is obsolete and was replaced by parallel processing. That is the new paradigm in supercomputing. Back in the 1970s, mathematical physics was my springboard to the parallel supercomputer. Calculus is the study of change. Algebra is the generalization of arithmetical operations and geometry is the study of shapes. During the 16 years onward of March 25, 1974 in Oregon, 
United States. I mastered how to translate calculus to algebra and, and further translate that new algebra into the floating point arithmetical operations that will enable the extreme scale computational physicist to explore the processes within a mile deep petroleum reservoir. That petroleum reservoir makes it possible to discover and recover the most crude, the, the most crude oil and natural gas. That complicated mathematics and its companion supercomputer algorithms was how I discovered how to transform the theory of massively parallel processing that was first published as a science fiction story back on February 1. My contribution to science is this. I discovered how to turn that science fiction to the non-fiction that is known as practical parallel processing that is the vital technology that powers the supercomputers that are used to forecast the weather above the surface of the earth, as well as and cast the quote-unquote weather below the surface of the earth. Back in 1989, I was in the new set lines because I discovered how to use parallel supercomputers and use them to bring out crude oil and natural gas that we are buried one by deep and buried millions of years ago. A mathematician may be immortalized for millions of years by the partial differential equation she invented. A physicist may be immortalized by her discovery of how to solve unsolved problems arising in extreme scale mathematical physics. But a computer scientist should only be immortalized by his invention of the world's fastest computer that is, a, that is a million or a billion times faster than previous computers. Insightful and brilliant lecture.